I wanted to find a solution to a problem. And I wanted to do whatever it takes to end that problem. In the mid-1970s, Bangladesh was racked with poverty and famine. Greedy moneylenders victimized local villagers who wanted to start small businesses. In one village, Muhammad Yunus counted 42 people who needed just $27 to break out of poverty. So then I, an idea came to my mind. If I give this $27 to all these 42 people, they can return the money to the moneylenders and they will be free. And that's what exactly I did. And the happiness that it brought to them caught me in. And I asked myself the question, if you can make so many people so happy with such a small amount of money, why shouldn't you do it more? Since that first bet, the bank Mohammed Yunus started has made nearly $5 billion in loans. It's a model that has been copied all over the world, spawning a movement known as microfinance. People are demonstrably better off in the world today by virtue of that simple insight that small, unsecured loans can really make a difference. Microfinance during the past 25 years has demonstrated that millions and millions of people can participate in society in a normal way. In 2006, Muhammad Yunus won the Nobel Peace Prize, testimony to the role of a new kind of change agent, the social entrepreneur. Social entrepreneurs like Muhammad Yunus see opportunities where other people see hopeless failures. They see potential where other people see tragic consequences. They see a future that others can't even begin to imagine. In this moment in history where government has, in at least in some places, has failed to provide basic goods and services, the things that societies need to really allow individuals to thrive. Social entrepreneurs are tackling those really big problems. Problems that reach beyond microfinance, such as educational opportunity, children's health, housing, clean water, climate change. And the problem is, if you look at what the current business organizations and governments are doing in this sort of space, it really doesn't add up to a coherent solution at the scale that we need. And therefore, I think entrepreneurs are going to be profoundly necessary. Because these are the people who sort of break up the concrete. Most people uh, have to see to believe. But I think that social entrepreneurs believe and then they see. Social entrepreneurs have seen the end result before it even got started. And they've done so all over the world. In Mozambique, Blaise Jujasato transformed healthcare by providing reliable medical services to millions of villagers who had never previously been reached. In India, Bunker Roy's Barefoot College teaches people with no prior training to build and install solar electric technologies. And in the United States, Dorothy Stoneman has shown how young people can change their lives and their communities through job training and education. We had 300 abandoned buildings in East Harlem where I lived. We had hundreds, maybe thousands, of young people standing on the corners with nothing to do and lots of homeless people. So I looked at that and said, there's something wrong with this picture. Someone should hire these young people to rebuild these buildings and create housing for the homeless people. And that's what we set out to do. What's the most powerful force you can bring to bear? It's a really big idea, but only if it's in the hands of a really good entrepreneur. It's that combination that changes the world. Today, thousands of social entrepreneurs are tackling a range of problems in all corners of the globe. But until recently, few of them saw themselves as part of a larger movement. Some 20 years ago, uh, social entrepreneurs were working alone. Fundamentally, they had no idea many times that other social entrepreneurs existed. They had a an experience of uh, essentially going against the stream, 
very hard. These are very tough people, but still alone. I think social entrepreneurs have always existed, but because they haven't always been defined as social entrepreneurs, because we've not always recognized them as such, they've had no collective identity. They have been lone pioneers. And now what you see in the world are a whole framework of supports that are coming up, coalescing very, very quickly to say, hey, social entrepreneurship is really viable. Oxford recruits about 300 highly talented MBA students each year. Students want to know how to change the world. They want to know how the skills they learn in business school can help them change the world. You see social entrepreneurs and regardless of however many problems and challenges that they have, they don't give up. They just push forward and they push forward. And that's inspiring to me. Today, Oxford is just one of many universities teaching social entrepreneurship and providing homes where practicing entrepreneurs can meet and learn from each other. The point of supporting the social entrepreneurship movement is to create a home for those people, to make them less maverick and more of a movement. The more we wire the field together, from local to national to global, it means that ideas go from Bangladesh to the US and Brazil. Poland to South Africa, that wasn't happening 10 years ago. Well, that's a function of the increased productivity of the field. I think the key thing that we have to come back to time and time again is these entrepreneurs cannot do this on their own. They need support. They need support from funders, clearly, but they need strategic partnerships with uh, mainstream business, and they need the support of government and policymakers. What's so exciting to be alive at this moment um, as a social entrepreneur connected to thousands of social entrepreneurs around the globe is that within all of us there's this growing movement and that, that there's a hopefulness in starting to look at the problems we have as our problems. My hope for the future is that by virtue of the stories that we tell about reasons for optimism, by virtue of the small pieces of success, we build some big pieces of success so that in a decade's time we can say this movement began with one very demonstrable success story and that was called microfinance but very quickly it built a series of other success stories and look at the effect they've had on the world. <laughs>